Um, I should say uh, as a word of explanation, so there's not just me here, so Anka is here from Bayer as well, um, and the, um, the current situation is, so, so I brought this call forwards, but from now on Anka's um, kindly offered to uh, take over the coordination of the project, although we will both still be involved. Um, so as, as Fatih says, I'm, I'm a medicinal chemist, so I'm not really an expert in biophysics or in, in kinetics or anything like that. I'm one of those uncultured people who's ignored this for too long, really. And I think I've, um, well, increasingly over the past few years come to the view that um, this area is really important and it's one that's been overlooked and probably neglected for uh, for too long. And I, I, my kind of thesis here is that this is um, part of the reason why um, the industry is struggling with productivity. Um, so I think this is this is kind of the problem statement in a nutshell. And obviously you could you could uh, write a whole book on on just this this aspect. But um, compounds can be clinically differentiated by their binding kinetics, um, and compounds with optimum kinetics we would postulate from that will suffer reduced attrition in development. Um, and I think that there's some anecdotal evidence for that when you look at um, when you look at marketed drugs, that a, a large proportion of them, more than 50% probably, have non-equilibrium binding, depending on how you measure it. And I, I contend that that's a massive um, enrichment over what's probably put into development. So you can, you can conclude from that there's a kind of evolutionary pressure that's selecting these compounds out. But the problem is that, as, as kind of captured in the last bullet here, is that for the most part, these compounds are found by chance and often not realized until quite late. So they're not really selected at the time when compounds are selected. Um, and so, so in, in essence, that's the problem. And I, I think um, what we'd like to do is to try and change that. But obviously, that's quite difficult. And, and um, <coughs> the reasons we think for that are, are outlined on this slide here. Um, and I think you could break that down into, into three aspects. Um, the first one is that we don't really understand what leads to changes in binding kinetics for compounds at a molecular level. Um, the second one is that the assay technologies that are used to, um, to assess this for compounds don't really operate in the traditional kind of design, make, test, analyze cycle that, that um, you would use to design <coughs> compounds. So you tend not to realize SAR for these kind of um, phenomena. Um, not in the time when, when, when it would really count. And I guess then there's another, another um, potential problem is that th these, um, the, properties, the kinetic properties of the compounds that are measured in vitro um, don't always translate into in vivo. Um, so you don't necessarily know that compounds that are picked up in, in assays such as, as is described here um, will actually translate into a, a meaningful clinical response. So based on that three, we've kind of structured this call in, in those three areas, really. So the first one to focus on the kind of molecular understanding of what it is that brings about changes in, in the way um, compounds interact with the targets. Um, and obviously that involves a study of um, both the key molecular interactions and, and um, you know, the different functional group uh, contributions to that, plus also the conformational changes that might be brought about in proteins. Um, Critical to this, I think, is the relationship between the thermodynamics of binding and, and the uh, corresponding effects on the kinetics. And obviously that brings in a range of techniques that um, are fairly widely available in terms of X-ray, NMR, SPR, I've listed a few there, um, just to, um, to, to help uncouple um, what individual contributions are to these um, to the phenomena. And, and obviously there's p potential for computational modeling around that as well. So what we're after here is captured in the, in the red bullet point is really the ability to design the appropriate kinetic behavior in a rational sense so we can, we can, we can manipulate compounds in a way that would let us design in or out slow off rates or what have you. Now obviously that's a long way from where we are now um, but we hope by studying these systems in, in more detail we'll, we'll gain some understanding and, and be able to make some inroads into that area. Um, in terms of assay technologies, I think there's a couple of issues that present themselves. I mean, obviously, there's current assay technologies such as Biocore and what have you that are, are really powerful and show, and show great promise. Um, 
But I think one of the problems is that there's a whole load of different methods that don't necessarily agree with, it, with each other in terms of data. So part of this, we, we kind of envisaged that we could look at standardizing existing technology and assessing how different systems translate so we can, we can assess which are the best ones to use the most appropriate in, in different situations. Um, but critically, I think that what we really need is higher throughput methodology um, because a lot of these, a lot of these um, techniques are applied kind of retrospectively to a, to a good <coughs> project at the moment and they, they don't really read out in the time frame of testing compounds as, as a potency assay would do. So that, mean, that means that the kind of information that you get from them is, is kind of neglected and doesn't influence the, um, the driving of the medicinal chemistry design in, in the time frame that you, would, that you would want. And another fairly significant limitation, although I guess addressed to, uh, to some degree recently, is the app applicability of some of these technologies to membrane proteins, which limits depending on the disease area you work in, I suppose, but lim limits the, uh, the number of targets of interest that you can actually prosecute in this way. Um, in particular, you know, if you're interested in, in GPCRs or membrane-bound enzymes, then you're very limited in what you can, uh, what you can measure. Um, 